Okay, this is just a video of the week 11 cheat. It's um, a group poll question. This image is a plan view of the group poll. It's a two by two poll group, four polls. It has a poll cap, but you ignore the poll cap in these questions. We're just dealing with four polls. They're at a one meter spacing center to center. See it here and here which means from the outside edge of this pole to the left-hand pole, if the pen would work, to the right-hand side is 1.5 metres, because the poles are 0.5 of a metre in diameter. Here. Um, the water table is at the surface. And the allowable working load of these piles is 2,500 kilonewtons. Pile lengths are 18 metres, uniform soil conditions, CU, undrain cohesion is 100 kPa, phi is zero, and gamma sat is 20 kilonewtons per cubic metre. The adhesion factor, alpha, is 0.9, and NC is given at 9.4. So what we've got to do is calculate the most likely failure type. There's two types. There's group failure and block failure. And I'll explain them as we go through. And then calculate the factor of safety against failure. All right, as we would have discussed in the lecture today, a group of piles, like in this case we have four piles, doesn't work as efficiently as four individual files. There's a factor we multiply called nita, and we need to calculate that as our first step. So M1 and N2 both equal 2, because there's 2 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction, and nita equals 1 minus, a little bit convoluted, but it's pretty simple math. It's M1 minus 1 in brackets times N2, plus N2 minus 1 in brackets times M1 all divided by 90 times m1 times n2 multiplied by 10 to the minus 1 the pile diameter divided by the pile spacing looks convoluted but we'll do it just to show i'll do it in full just to make it so you can see that it's not that bad 2 minus 1 times 2 plus 2 minus 1 times 2 divided by 90 by 2 by 2 all times 10 to the minus 1 0 0.5 on 1 which comes down to 1 minus 0 0.0111 times 26.565 which equals nita equals 0 0.705 0 0.705 which just means that four group piles um, are only about 70% as efficient as four individual piles. All right, so now we'll go through and calculate the um, ultimate bearing capacity of a single pile in this group. Um, remember, our piles are 0.5 of a metre in diameter by 18 metres long. So this is the formula for it. Um, this part here is the uh, ultimate bearing capacity at the base of the pile and the second part is the ultimate bearing capacity from the shaft adhesion of the pole. So let's go through and calculate it. It equals CNC, so 100 times 9.4, which we, we were given, plus Q, which is 20 metres, sorry, 20 k 
kilonewtons per cubic meter minus 9.8 to make it effective times 18 meters depth which gives us Q at the base of the pole times NQ phi is 0 NQ equals 1 we'll know that by now times the area of the base which is pi by 0.5 squared on 4 plus um, the second part of the equation the shaft adhesion the sum of is just if we have different layers in this case we've got one layer continuous and sorry let's go back down to there alpha is 0.9 CU is 100 and the area of the shaft is um, pi times 0.5 pi d by 18 meters deep and that's going to give us the shaft adhesion you can go through and calculate all that but that calculates out to 2.765 kilonewtons all right, so that gives us the ultimate bearing capacity of a single pole. Um, remembering we've got a group of four of these things, and we calculated before up the top here, nita equals 0 0.705, and that means that four poles in a group are only 70.5% as efficient as four individual poles. So we can go through and calculate Q ultimate group from the formula nita n q ultimate single so that's what we just calculated 2765 is q ultimate single there are four of them but they're only 70.5 percent as efficient so that's equals 0 0.7705 times 4 times 2765 kilonewtons calculate that out and that comes to 7797 kilonewtons is the ultimate bearing capacity of a group of four of the poles. Now we've got to look at Q ultimate block and that is thinking that this group of four poles is working as a block that is 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters on each side it's one solid block of material supporting the load so if we go back down um, Q ultimate block the formula looks similar similar it's CNC plus Q and Q times the area of the base of the block plus the sum of um, alpha CU area of the block sides. Let's just go through that and work out what everything is. At the start it's all the same. It's 100 times 9.4. Sorry. That. we don't want that bracket 100 times 9.4 plus Q which is 18 meters deep times 20 minus 9.8 like before to make it effective times NQ which is 1 because phi equals 0 all that times the area of the base of the block and as I showed you it's 1.5 meters on each side so it's times 1.5 times 1.5 plus that's that's the the base ultimate bearing capacity now we want the shaft like before 0.9 uh, for alpha CU is 100 and the area of the sides of the block is 1.5 meters in plan length times 18 meters long which is the depth of the pile and there are four of them, four sides to the block. So it's 1.5 times 18 times 4. 
and that'll give us the shaft adhesion on the block. Go through and calculate that out. Equals one double two four eight kilonewtons. Ultimate bearing capacity of the block. And we can now see that Q ultimate group seven seven nine seven kilonewtons is less than one double two four eight kilonewtons. Therefore it'll the lower one means it will fail in group mode. So our Q ultimate for design purposes is double seven nine seven kilonewtons. You choose the lower of the two values. And just to finish the question, they want the factor of safety. Uh, we know that the ultimate design value is double seven nine seven, and we know that the working load was twenty five hundred kilonewtons, and that equals three point one, which equals the factor of safety. And that finishes that question.